And welcome back everyone to the Decoder channel. Uh, sorry about the delay. Um, you know, I, I had a problem with my uh, microphone battery. So the problem was on me. Can happen to the best of us, right? But yeah, whatever, we're here. And uh, tonight, the guest of uh, the, v the VIP, like the yeah premium guest that we have tonight is 773 from Yakukop. I don't know if uh, all of you know about the project, but like, yeah, OG project. So uh, yeah, I'm happy to have you, uh, 773, to uh, the channel. Welcome home, bro. Hey, happy to be here. Appreciate you uh, putting us on the platform, giving us a chance to talk a bit about the project and uh, exactly. happy to support. We love Decoders. We love Vince. Yeah. He's a legend. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, it works better with like some power in the microphone. But yeah, other than that, let's talk about Yakuka for the next 45 minutes. Let's do it. So yeah, okay. So bro, like okay, let's start. Let's start with yourself first. Like, who, who are you? How did you even start in Web three? And um, yeah, what's your position uh, for what? What are you doing for Yakukop? Yeah, definitely. So I'm seven seven three plays. Uh, nice. I'm the head of business development and the chief marketing officer with Yaku Corp. And no, actually, my uh, my start in uh, kind of this field and marketing and business development didn't come actually in Web3. I, I come from a Web2 background. So uh, I worked with a number of uh, major companies in, in Web2 and kind of got my start with uh, marketing, social media, digital marketing, brand messaging in the Web2 sphere. And uh, then Yaku team went ahead and uh, brought me on the team, made me a partner. So uh, I'm a okay. partner of Raijin Labs, our parent company, mm -hmm. uh, and all our subsidiaries, which are Kuro brand, our kind of IP fashion wing and Yaku Corp, which is our gaming and metaversal wing. So uh, what I do is handle pretty much, uh, if you see any content, any uh, public messaging, any customer facing messaging, it's probably me. Uh, nice. Most of the partnerships and everything in terms of Yaku, uh, I'm the one uh, kind of negotiating those and working behind the scenes on those. So that's pretty much uh, a kind of a eagle eye overview of what uh, I do on the team. That's you know, the public face on the podcast. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Okay, so can you summarize, like, for the people who didn't follow Yaku uh, since the last, I think, two years, right? You have been there for for two years now. Yes. Yeah. So, like, yeah, if if we if there is like a couple of non OG Solana OG people who don't know Yaku Cop, who would you? Uh, what's your elevator pitch, bro? So we're a cyberpunk metaverse, uh, but we like to stretch kind of beyond that term. You can think mm -hmm. of a, a digital world. So everything that you would uh, normally interface with in a digital world, retail mm -hmm. uh, experiences and and gaming. So we're kind of the culmination of uh, kind of those crossroads where business, retail, entertainment, gaming all kind of coincide uh i like to tell people we're the ready player one of web3 okay that's cool i can i can buy that, uh, that, that <laughs> that's cool okay so what's the difference between like the uh, a classic game and like yaku when you like uh entangle like businesses places inside the world is that like second life stuff yeah so the that's a uh, you're an OG, definitely, if you know about Second Life or Entropia Universe. Um, that's kind of, we see that as kind of like a precursor to what we are. Um, you know, so your traditional game is going to only consist of your gameplay loops and basic uh, game mechanics or game shops. So we take that a step further by uh, really integrating Web2 brands and, and storefronts and uh, that whole kind of uh, B2B aspect into our game natively and, of course, with the assistance of the chain. Okay, no, th that's pretty cool. Okay, so what's the web three tech uh, gives you that's not possible to do just in web two or in uh, any classic game? So uh, obviously, being able to have our SPL token and make that mm -hmm. kind of the lifeblood of our universe, um, and then of course all the other aspects like you know the smart contract, uh, trustless systems that kind of uh, make make up the backbone of our B two B system and uh, allow us to really you know, kind of have these uh, retail experiences without the need of uh, workers or 
inventory or any, any of those things, just, uh, you know, using the Solana ledger. Okay. And uh, I, how many players do you have right now? Uh, so we have uh, our player base kind of ranges uh, sometimes, uh, well, simultaneously in the world, uh, a few hundred at a time. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, we really see that expanding heavily as we just closed recently an Epic Games store uh, yes, integration uh, and partnership. So our player base will be heavily spiking once we uh, go live on the Epic launcher. That's cool. That's pretty cool. And OK, so. I know like gamers right now, like uh, Web2 gamers are not really like, and they're not big fans of Web3 because it's something that like they see as a scam and stuff like that. So how do you manage onboarding those people who don't like, who want to have fun while playing the game and don't want to feel like starting a new job when they connect to they, they're, yeah, they're gonna they connect to their game and they want to play uh, whatever the fuck they want to play. Um, what's the yeah? What's the go to market strategy for that? So uh, we kind of tackle that from a, a kind of trifold approach. Prim primarily is establishing trust and credibility because, like you mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. Web two gamers really kind of hear NFT or Web three, and it's almost a, dir a dirty word to them. You mm -hmm. know they instantly associated with scams and all these exit liquidity scams and uh, really uh from a gamer perspective they kind of just connected with oh uh you know spending irrational amounts of money on jpegs and uh so we really distance ourselves from that and and kind of try to show the how the technology is leverageable and it actually creates a beneficial experience you know so uh, there was an, a situation that kind of happened in, in Web2 Gaming. I'm, I'm not sure if it's Bethesda or, or if it was Valve, uh, but a major studio, uh, they were canceling licenses. If you hadn't interacted with the game uh, for a certain X amount of mm -hmm. time, just because they didn't want to, you know, hold all that data in their databases, they were yeah. completely canceling your license. And so we kind of felt like that was a strong way to highlight the need for actual decentralization and ownership from the player. Uh, so that's kind of one aspect, pushing the, you know, the actual benefits of the tech. Another aspect is actually making sure you have a fun gameplay loop. At the end of the day, uh, gamers want to act interact with something that's fun. They don't, you know, they don't really give a shit about uh, the background technology. They care about fun and engaging experiences with their friends. And so we make sure that gameplay is a core focus. Uh, so our kind of flagship modes are racing, which is uh, actually, you know, a lot closer to being done than a lot of people are expecting. And then uh, our FPS combat testing system. So we make sure that uh, we really iterate on those and, and make those fun experiences. So at the end of the day, uh, you know, you just want to play a fun game with your friends and that's what we're creating. And then kind of the final aspect is reducing friction. And so uh, we just recently announced a partnership with uh, Immutable X, which has really strengthened our ability through Passport to uh, kind of invisibly onboard Web2 gamers, whether it's through uh, the fee sponsorship. So, you know, they'll never have to sign a transaction. Uh, we pay all the gas fees and everything related with all uh, every transaction. So they would never have to see those signatures and annoying screens pop up. Uh, and on top of that, Immutable creates invisible wallets uh, where you can just connect Google or your Apple ID or known ways that gamers already interact with games and uh really make it that's simple cool. that's pretty cool yeah i like we had like a runiverse um on the channel like a couple of weeks ago and i think they are already integrated with immutable so that's that, that's the chain for games right like that's right. The, yeah that, that, that's pretty cool i didn't know about like the invisible wallet stuff but uh, that's cool that's yeah, so we really want to make it easy and kind of intuitive. Not only do they have the invisible wallet integration, but uh, actually Immutable Passport translates all these kind of uh, almost mystical signature messages. You know, a lot of gamers don't understand, you know, what the fuck am I signing? What yeah. like, uh, And that kind of raises security concerns and, uh, you know, things like that. So Immutable Passport makes for one one uh, kind of universal passport across all their games and their chains. So, you know, yeah. you don't have to make a wallet each time you onboard onto a game. And uh, it really translates these signature messages into really intuitive messages that gamers can understand. Oh, it makes sense why, you know, why I have to do this or approve this. Mm. I mean, yeah, like a gamer just needs to play the game and not 
breaking sign a transaction every five minutes because they have a new loot, right? Exactly. Yeah. So friction is like the number one thing that we work to reduce on the on the Yaku team and uh, making it easy as possible. We see ourselves going for, uh, you know, that million plus player base. Uh, and, and we really think that's something that's feasible and attainable. So we right now are have been laying the framework and foundation to be able to have that mass onboard event. Mm, uh, that, that's And that's definitely the target with like games. Uh, games vertical um, in Web3. That, that's definitely interesting. That could be the next bull run meta, I think. That's possible. Um, question from Carlos. Uh, I would love to learn about project sustainability. Uh, Carlos, are you asking for the, um, the gamers slash holders, or are you more about like sustainability in terms of business? I will let you give us more, like, uh, yeah. Um, complementary information but i think it's like to the to avoid like the pandemics of like uh yeah play to earn aka like uh, x infinity right so yeah is that also like something that you were concerned about in terms of business okay um with like the pandemic like of like play to earn that we saw during the last bur uh, burn no so uh we really want to of course, we'll have opportunities for gamers to play and, you know, earn digital collectibles in game uh, mm -hmm. that will be desirable, you know, just because of rarity and things like that. But we really want to, uh, you know, we just made a thread a few days ago on our Twitter about kind of the, the problems with the Web3 gaming and pushing pushing play to earn uh, too much is kind of what I see as a major yeah. obstacle into mass onboarding because we turn something that's a leisure activity. You know, gaming has always been about immersing yourself in a digital world and forgetting, you know, the responsibilities and problems of the real world and just having a t chance to uh, kind of decompress and have some fun with your friends. So we yeah. never want to push players into uh, feeling like, hey, I, you know, like a task list, like a second job. Uh, hey, I have to do this, this, this. Yeah. When you kind of go for that meta, you really uh, eliminate the the entire purpose that gaming kind of fits, which is, uh, you know, fun, e engaging experiences with friends or, or mm -hmm. solo, if that's the way you choose to play. So uh, where we get kind of our sustainability in terms of business is, uh, well, we have a few different, uh, you know, revenue streams that we can look towards. So one is our B2B integrations, whether it's uh, selling advertisement, billboards which if you've ever been in the yakuverse you know we have uh, ample you know advertising space secondly is uh kind of our building uh so for example uh pop pals or monkey dow they have their tower set up and uh that's one source of revenue and then the rest is of course we, we look to games like fortnite uh for really uh revenue and monetization kind of uh, models so you know fortnite you don't buy the skins because uh, you expect to make some type of you yeah. know financial gain and uh, it really helps us to avoid some of these uh, SEC regulations, securities, and things like that. You buy the skins because players have always looked for ways to differentiate themselves and express themselves. So we're looking at uh, really collectibles, battle passes, uh, and aesthetics as being a, a way so that, you know, it's not a play a pay to win type of game that's something mm -hmm. we definitely want to avoid and so it's not like let me do xyz tasks so i can earn the token and i need to do this where i'm not making money mm -hmm. uh we emphasize fun and onboarding a uh, large player bases which then leads to making the collectibles more desirable and kind of drives value through that uh through those avenues yeah yeah like in in the games like you want the big loot because you are a big boy and uh... Yeah, like they it's a big contest, but uh, yeah, it's flexing, right? And uh, exactly, and, yeah. <laughs> that's been the essence of like yeah, a lot. Everyone of... wants to flex, yeah. True, bro, true. <laughs> and you have apartment too in Yaku, right? Because I remember the mint, right? Yeah, so we have yeah. our that's our capsule collection. Uh, yeah. So there's a, a few different kind of tiers. Our basic is our capsule, which is, you know, you can think of as your standard apartment. A uh, step above that is your space suite. Then we have your galactic penthouse, which is, you know, a little bit more of a baller pad there. And then uh, the highest tier we have is our divine mansion. So the divine mansion uh, allows more 
you to invite more players over. You can uh, host events there, and it's located on our exclusive Jumeirah Island. So, uh, you know, if you can, uh, if anyone's familiar with Miami, you can think of Star Island. That's what our Jumeirah Island is, and uh, what our mansion kind of our mansion environment is. That's pretty cool. Okay, so um, and the NFT holders have those apartment and place when they can advertise. So it's basically like, yeah, if I'm a business, then I have a NFT, then I have the apartment, and then I can sell that virtual estate to everything that I want, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And I, but I can play the game without the NFT and exploring the world the way you want and like play the memo. Right. So uh, that kind of gives you a space within the world to kind of decorate and uh, kind of serve as your headquarters. And in the future, you know, you'll be able to let's say I'm a project. Right. Uh, and I don't really want to go invest all the way into a full size uh, skyscraper or a storefront. You know, I could have a divine mansion and uh, invite, you know, I believe it's about 20 players that you can invite over, have fun events or with your friends, et cetera. So uh, that's kind of a. Uh, we wanted to give a digital space where you can really feel like it's your own and customize. Uh, you can customize the artwork on the wall with all the NFTs from your wallet and, you know, really give that that sense of like a, a digital home. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. And do you have like quest to do in the game or just like an open world and you do uh, whatever you want? No, so... Uh, uh, there's two, we have our an MMO aspect overlaid over this uh, open world aspect. So our, mm -hmm. our quest system is going to be releasing with a, a little bit after our alpha, we'll have our full quest system release where it's going to be just like, a, cool. I don't know if you ever played WoW. Yes. But oh, uh, okay, yes. so you're familiar. It's going to be yeah. a quest system similar to WoW. So we'll have... Yeah, We'll have our whole digital world experience where, you know, maybe not every player who jumps in is going to want to be, you know, uh, a really grindy MMO player. Uh, so then they would be able to just kind of run around, enjoy the scenery, hang out with friends and engage in the experiences with some of our partners that we're working on creating, whether it's uh, branded races, whether it's uh, amazing art fairs that showcases, you know, unique artists and uh, their creations, whether it's... Uh, you know, a little bit more. There's some experiences I can't really talk about, uh, you know, because we're under NDA with some of our bigger partners, okay. but uh, there's a, a lot coming. And so whether you you just want to enjoy the digital world aspect, whether you're an MMO fan and you really want to get into the, you know, the skill trees and the mm -hmm. ability customization and building the power of your character, we're going to have something for everyone there. That's cool. Okay, so I I going to have like PV and PVP? Yes, so... um. Are, we'll have PVE systems where you're either okay. racing against bikes or racing uh, time trials, okay, and uh, cool. also with our with our combat testing systems, uh, we'll have you know bot wave modes and, and things like that, survival modes. And then on our PVP side, uh, for our racing, we'll definitely have PVP races where you're competing against other bike owners and uh, other players to win the races for Yaku rewards or other rewards. And then uh, we'll, we're looking at, uh, for our FPS, implementing the typical uh, FPS multiplayer modes, whether it's, you know, capture the flag or uh, search and destroy, team deathmatch, mm -hmm. or those more traditional FPS game modes. Okay. And, but, okay, so, but, like, with that upcoming uh, features, like, we're talking about, like, million of dollars of development. How do you manage that? Uh, and and the development, the time of development required, uh, compared to like the attention uh, lifespan, uh, yeah, attention span of like the people in Web three. How do you manage that? Right. So we definitely understand. You know, the traditional Web three audience uh, is not the most patient, and that's something that we've kind of experienced over these uh, kind of two years of being builders. Yeah. Uh, generally, in the Web three space, people don't want to wait for a builder to create a polished product. They just kind of want it to magically appear. <laughs> and as much as I wish that that's how it worked, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't. But um, so I'll kind of touch back on the first part and then get towards that second part. So you said, mm -hmm. uh, how do we manage, exactly. you know, yeah. the the high levels of development costs and things like that? Well, first, I want to say that we have. Uh, you know, maybe I'm biased, but I feel like we have some of the most cracked devs 
and uh, our team has been able to produce such a huge map. So for reference, I always tell people cyberpunk uh, took about 10 years and over $300 million of development. And we've been able to replicate, you know, the same AAA quality, a huge map that's ever expanding. And, you know, in our next patch, we're going to have a whole entire new zone that has yet to be explored. And even within the map that's already revealed, we have a, uh, a huge area that is kind of uh, blocked off our Yakushima forest and and the rest of it. So our devs are just extremely hardworking and passionate and and uh, thank thank goodness that we have uh, a number of tools which help streamline development within Unreal Engine 5.3, uh, like Nanite, Lumite, <clears throat> uh, Nerf technologies, which is a neural radiance field. If anyone is not familiar, uh, that allow us to bring in environments that uh, exist in the IRL world and implement them quickly like that. And so uh, we've had these two years to really kind of work on all those things, you know, the time of development and all that. And we're getting close to our culmination moment where, uh, you know, pretty much everything that we set out to achieve when we originally, uh, when we originally marketed the product uh, with our alpha, it'll kind of signal the culmination and completion of almost everything that we set out to initially create. So uh, primarily it's due to our amazing devs and our amazing task management system. We heavily, heavily rely on task management tools like Notion and and uh, uh, Milanote and these other task management tools. Uh, we have all the time weekly meetings where we're setting, uh, so we do, we go by sprints. So we'll set a, a one week to two week sprint. Each individual team member has their tasks and then we kind of check in and, you know, we believe in extreme ownership uh, for each team member. And that's what's really kept us on pace. So it's just a, a matter of uh, taking advantage of all the tools that are available now, whether it's, uh, you know, procedural generation or, but actually we're very lucky. We have a, probably 95% of the world that you see was actually built and placed and everything uh, by our artists. So there's almost no procedurally generated anything, marketplace assets, anything like that. Uh, our members are just dedicated working, you know, 15 hours a day. That's cool. And how, how many people do you have in the team right now? So we have uh, about 12 members on the team, but uh, there's a little bit more than that just because uh, So we have members who are not full-time members, mm -hmm. but they're kind of uh, specialized members that when we need something in their wheelhouse, we go ahead and uh, you know have them operate on us. But I would say full-time team members is something around 10 to 12. Mm. And like, what's the burn rate? Do you, do you know the burn rate of the company in the last two years? Uh, as far as the burn rate, I'm not exactly sure yeah. on the exact number, but what I can say is that uh, a lot of our members, uh, so we have two kind of differentiations between our team members. We have Sensei, which are partners of the actual uh, ownership. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have equity and uh, we're paid in equity. Then we have more like our your, your standard uh, kind of employee that's paid, you know, uh, on a per weekly basis and things like that. And so... Um, all the time, financial runway is uh, mm -hmm. something that we always are mindful of. And uh, to kind of indirectly answer the question, we have an essentially infinite runway. So we we never have to worry about a really burn rate overtaking us. We have almost an infinite runway. And uh, even if we ever had an issue, which, uh, you know, we're mm -hmm. always doing financial projections, myself and the CEO, and uh, we definitely don't foresee any. But even if we did, we have a number of uh, investors that would be ready to... Uh, that's you know, cool. go ahead and give us some funds if we need it. But uh, yeah, like I mentioned, we we don't really worry about that on the team. Uh, it's not something that we ever really have to deal with. That's cool. Uh, if if you're looking for some uh, small project uh, who uh, are looking for infinite runway, uh, just slide in my DM, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that that's pretty cool. And like the mint also covered like the a part of the uh, development cost, or it was like that small for what you are building right now. Right, so the we've been extremely uh, fiscally conservative with the mm -hmm. runway, uh, with the mint funds that we had received with our three different uh, mints. Yeah. And so that has been enough to propel us for a, a long while. And then uh, even in times where we've had, uh, you know, needs or lapses, our CEO has personally funded uh, that's cool. Any any needs? Yeah. So he's able to do that if we if we need be. That's that's why nice. we're really never concerned. That's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, lucky you.
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna come back to um, the question above. Uh, okay, so Mr. Pig Brain, what do you think about the quality of the games like Bobos of Wars, Botborg, BR1? I don't know this one. Why do you think there haven't been any hit? What difference comparison can you make with Yaku? Okay, so first, uh, yeah, what what what's your take about the quality of the games that we see in Web3 right now? So uh, I can't speak for all of them. Uh, you know, nowadays I don't I don't have too much time to game as much as yeah. I used to. But uh, I'm familiar with BR1, and it seems like a, a very high quality game. And uh, there's definitely some high quality games. We consider ourselves part of the the holy trinity of Web3, if you if you'll say so. Uh, <laughs> ourselves, Star Atlas, and Wilder World are games that we really uh, we really kind of uh, view as our peers and. Yeah. Um, they're extremely polished games and uh, extremely, uh, you know, well developed with well developed teams and leaderships. Uh, and so there is definitely quality games within the Web three space. It's just uh, they are a little bit more rare. I will agree with you, yeah. uh, Pighead, Mister Pigbrain. As far as why I don't think they they're a hit. So I think the number one reason is because uh, a lot of a lot of times teams focus within the echo chamber that is web3 so they're trying to capture an ever shrinking audience especially in a bear market mm -hmm. it's going to lead to that smaller consumer and player base and the differences uh you know i can kind of point to with yaku is that we're not just a game so we first of all we have the added credibility of uh onboarding these major web2 partners which i'm not really sure what other gaming projects have been able to integrate major partners such as honda for example into the world and kind of that additional credibility and trustworthiness definitely opens us up to a larger web2 audience and then on top of that it's just a matter of messaging and where are you uh you know where are your advertising dollars flowing where is your messaging flowing towards and uh you know we really differentiate our Ourselves in that way by, uh, like I said, I come from a traditional Web2 background, so I'm extremely familiar with the Web2 marketing pipelines and how standard, uh, you know, marketing and advertisement towards the general demographic. I'm extremely familiar with running campaigns like that and uh, making sure we convert on those proper demographics. So we really uh, differentiate ourselves by a different targeting positioning. So I'll just give you an example. Uh, October 6th, uh, I'll be speaking at the UCLA Global Sports Business Forum alongside the NBA, the NFL, the Olympics, uh, kind of all the major players. And so um, really positioning ourselves around these major Web2 brands and, and uh, companies really kind of allows us to target those audiences and have a much bigger visibility than uh, projects that only remain around crypto Twitter and, you know, kind of live in that small ecosphere we want to make sure that we're targeting everybody not just uh you know web3 dgens or or solana yeah. ecosystem and and that step with imx is uh, our first step towards being multi-chain and it's not our last that's what i can say uh, oh. and uh is the next chain is gonna start with is and finish <laughs> with air <laughs> So uh, at the moment, you know, I can't, uh, I can't get too, too much into it, but I can say that uh, you're a very sharp, sharp, astute observer, Vince. Good luck with the transaction cost. <laughs> we have, we have our, uh, you know, we have some systems. We've been yeah. uh, looking at multiple things. So uh, thanks okay. to this, uh, you know, the ETH L2, which is IMX, mm. uh, really allows oh, us yeah, to true, kind of be true, flexible. True, true. That, that's that's why MX is a banger and gonna works for games. Uh, yeah. Okay, so a question from Reaper. Do you feel there might have to be a pivot from IMX for Yaku because of the continuous concern over IMX continuity? Oh my God. Being put in the light of more centralization and the governments and the validators. Do you care about centralization for the game? So, um... Obviously, you know, we want to make sure that we're not uh, partnering ourselves with a partner that's going to be overbearing or control too much of our creative process or any mm -hmm. other processes. But uh, we've had extensive conversations, myself personally and our CEO, with the IMX team and let them know kind of all our concerns and any sticking points. And uh, we're, uh, you know, I can't speak for every game that onboards on to IMX, but uh, our, our team has personally 
our team and game has personally been audited by their team. And so uh, they understand uh, kind of the fact that we already have an extremely dynamic uh, consumer base and we're a little more prestige than some of the games that have onboarded. So we have a lot more flexibility in our decision making and uh, we have a lot more kind of uh, self-determination in that respect. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. And yeah, like, I mean, I don't know if you see, uh, if you saw like the news with like a unity that changed their business model and the yeah. Charles developers of pro that's like, if we see that stuff with like blockchain governance or like not transaction fees, but like at some point, I mean, you can, you can always like use a protocol that can, uh, say, it, uh, on Monday, okay, now you're going to pay like 0 0.5 sol per transaction, uh, aka like a Metaplex try to implement with the business model, right? Um, if that happened at the, yeah, the layer one of a chain, like the protocol base of the uh, protocol level of a chain, that could be dramatic. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, potentially, potentially, but the, the but kind the, of the difference, kind of the difference is, is that we that have, we have uh, the flexibility and, you know, we have, uh, we've increased our desirability and our kind of uh, presence within the space so that we have a number of options open, you know, if anything was to happen to one chain and, mm -hmm. you know, who knows, potentially in the future, uh, if, if it really got that bad, uh, you know, it might not be out of the question to uh, go ahead and do our own thing. But um, yeah. as of now, we've, you know, we've had numerous discussions and, you know, obviously we have paperwork as well to kind of uh, protect us from uh, some of this, uh, at least on the IMX yeah. side. And, uh, and that's why we uh, intend to make ourselves chain agnostic. So, you know, if something happens with a, uh, one chain it's not it's not something that's going to be uh detrimental or destructive to our to our kind of uh business model oh, that's cool that's cool and yeah i mean it's it's good good business practices to do that yeah never put our eggs in all in one basket definitely exactly yeah sell your degot when you are the ath <laughs> <laughs> um okay so oh yeah about like the um, uh, regin labs parent company like when i explore like the twitter account like you're also creating um like anime to sell like yakukop universe like is that did i uh, understand correctly yeah so Raijin labs is the parent of all you know our two subsidiaries at the moment and you know mm -hmm. they can expand uh, as we you know as we look to cross more verticals but uh so Raijin labs is the parent and our ip slash streetwear fashion slash anime manga division is kuro so through the kuro prod uh project that's how we're also going to increase visibility of the you know our entire ecosystem is by targeting people who maybe they're not the biggest gamers but they love anime and they mm -hmm. love uh, or they love fashion so we're we're crossing multiple verticals and kind of funneling all that viewership, all the revenue, et cetera, into our game development and our game ecosystem. And that's one of the steps that kind of differentiates us is that we have multiple arms that appeal to, you know, multiple different ICPs and demographics and allow us to be a little more versatile. Mm -hmm. And it's another revenue stream as well. And this is not your typical NFT merch. Uh, this is a full-fledged fashion brand. Uh, and we have mm -hmm. a number of partners. Uh, right now, I can't really, uh, we're under NDA currently, but uh, as, uh, you know, it kind of clears up, we'll be able to discuss a number of our fashion, major Web2 fashion partners that will uh, kind of assist us in this uh, transition. And so we're extremely excited about that. So Kuro, it's going to include, you know, typical uh, manga, graphic novels, uh, mm -hmm. It's going to include all our street fashion wear, as I mentioned, and also in the future, you know, don't be surprised if you see some uh, Yaku lore anime out there. Jesus, so you're busy. Yeah, ex yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm kind of the art director of uh, the Kuro brand. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on top of all the other uh, responsibilities that I have, yes, I've been extremely busy uh, <laughs> kind of making sure that, uh, you know, our brand messaging is consistent and really world building and, uh, and our Kuro brand. So, but it's extremely exciting. And uh, mm -hmm. our, uh, this is kind of alpha. You won't hear anywhere else. And, uh, but, yes. you know, we love decoders. So uh, if you see my PFP, 
that's, that's, uh, what, that's a representation of the Kuro art. That's cool. That's 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 right. I, and, and that's what we're going to see in the anime. Yes. Cool. That's nice. So what do you think about like the anime uh, Azuki anime? Uh, uh, not style, but like, uh, yeah, like the whole process. When you saw it, like the trailer, what did you think about it? Uh, I'm not going to lie. Just uh, I kind of saw that from a, you know, a consumer perspective yeah. since I'm not on the team. And I, I thought it was pretty sick. It gave me some Studio Ghibli vibes. Uh, but the only thing is that, uh, uh, you know, of course, uh, we respect the project and everything. But, uh, you know, we never mean anything we say in a detrimental way. But, of course, uh, a lot of these videos are more kind of promotional trailers, yeah. more than like a full-fledged anime actual, you know, show yeah. or, or universe. That's what we're looking to build. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just, you know, hype trailer videos, but actually full-fledged story building, uh, engaging anime is like you know your favorite uh all yeah. of our team is huge anime fans so we're we're looking to create something to the standard of demon slayer naruto uh, awesome. these timeless classics that really have that staying power and uh kind of appeal across multiple age demographics That's... good luck yeah yeah and so we're we're already That's... in talks with a number of different studios uh to produce and uh, it's just a matter of kind of which fits our art direction best and uh, mm -hmm. which really can kind of uh, facilitate a long-term partnership with us. And once we have that in place, uh, like I mentioned, we're already, I think, over 20 different studios we've already discussed with. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're actively shopping at the moment for, uh, you know, a good high-quality production studio. Um, and yeah, that, then you can start to see some uh, Yaku anime. That's cool. Okay, and what's the goal of this anime? Like expanding the brand into another vertical to target a new audience that will be drive to the game at the end of the day, right? Yes, and even if they're not, uh, so we see, uh, you know, like I have a, you know, you can just think of it kind of in a kind of in a common sense way. You know, I'm sure you might have some friends that you love to watch anime, but they're not really gamers. So we don't want to try to convert every single person and force the game, uh, you know, force them to interact with the game. We want to kind of meet people at their interests. And so if you're just an anime fan and you just kind of want to be a part of the Yaku lore, and we feel like we have pretty engaging and unique lore, if you just want to engage with it as a, as a fan and viewer of the anime, you're more than happy to exist there. Mm -hmm. If you want to take it a step further and, and kind of dive into our whole streetwear aesthetic through that or dive into the game where you can kind of see all these, uh, all the kind of, you know, power-ups and characters and all the, you know, enemies and the, the kind of lore that you see represented in the anime, uh, you know, maybe you want to be an active participant in that. So that's where you would want to jump in the game. And so... Uh, we really want to make sure that we're, like I mentioned, meeting consumers at their interests and not trying to convert them uh, into, you know, engaging in something that they're not, mm. they're not really interested in. Uh, that, that's interesting because, yeah, this cross-media IPs are like, it's basically big, right? Like, again, like you can... Uh, uh, like now, you were mentioning Naruto, like you go from the manga uh, to the manga to like the anime, and tomorrow on Netflix you will have like the live action uh, TV show Naruto, whatever after the success of One Piece, right? Um, and all the time it's like grow the audience. So yeah, maybe we're, we're gonna see more plays like that in the future. Um, in yeah, definitely. And we're trying to be the first mover in that way. So we kind of, uh, you know, we kind of take the biggest market share. Uh, <laughs> we're nice guys, but we're, uh, we're uh, you know, we might be known as cutthroat businessmen. And what do you expect from, like, previous Solana orders? Like, how can they play with that and continue to support you in your journey? Like, because you, like, you're migrating to M. Um, like, yeah, how does that work? Um, so the IMX partnership has really more to do, uh, not so much with our NFTs. Uh, yeah. we, you know, we really told the community, this is, don't think of this as a departure from Solana. Think of mm -hmm. this as our next step in chain expansion. So it's not that we're, uh, you know, abandoning our Solana NFT 
holders or the NFT assets, it's that we're increasing our footprint across multiple chains. And at the end of the day, something that we always uh, is kind of our North Star among like the team members internally is that blockchain is a background technology. The only yeah. reason it's so it's so uh, kind of tribalistic right now, like Solana, ETH, I, is because these are small you know, these are still small emerging tech. And so uh, it kind of has no. this cult fan base. But if you kind of take a, a step backwards and a macro view, uh, you'll notice that, you know, these are background technologies to be utilized as such. We don't have to limit ourselves to one chain. While, you know, each chain has its uh, benefits and its strengths. So IMX is the gaming chain. So it's going to compromise our gaming SDK and our in-game transactions. But Solana is still, uh, you know, a highly accessible chain. And we would never want to, you know, leave that. And then, you know, like you kind of mentioned, there's other chains as well that have their own uh, appeal and uh, consumer base. And so we're looking to grow the community as much as possible. And that's beneficial not only for our original holders, but for the health of the game and the company. You know, as the the uh, game, the you know, the user base expands, then these digital collectibles, uh, you know, are going to be more desirable. And, you know, it's like a feedback loop. So we always make sure that all of our decisions uh, benefit everyone involved in our ecosystem. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, that's how, how long do you need to what's a like, timeline to achieve like the big goal of like great getting those this audience in your game and the, in your universe? Two weeks, three weeks? Can you can you repeat the question? I'm sorry, I cut uh, off a bit. Uh, no, sorry. Um, how how much uh, time do you think you will need to uh, to achieve like your audience goal of like having million of players? So um, that's a kind of a bit of a difficult question for us to answer, as you know, we can't uh, we can't really foresee how many. Just with this Epic Games integration, mm -hmm. um, it's going to drive, true. you know, they have a huge player base uh, mm -hmm. already, you know, late, natively there. So um, it's going to drive a, a large uh, amount of players from there. And then, uh, you know, we're not sure exactly uh, how many players are going to want. We expect a lot, but, you know, I, I can't really put a figure uh, mm -hmm. on, on that a lot. But once we have our race mode, which is, uh, you know, I've already got to check it out and try it. So uh that's that's as far as I can really say about that. But uh, uh, once that's released, which is really our flagship mode, we can see uh, we foresee a, a large, large uh, player base. And uh, on top of that, we have uh, so we have some some of this onboarding already accounted for. So there's a number of major guilds that we've partnered with that are are just waiting for our announcement. Uh, to kind of completely integrate their communities and their guild members into our player base. And, you know, uh, it yeah. can be thousands already there. So um, That's cool. we're we're not too concerned with like, uh, we're not too worried about, oh, where are we going to get, uh, you know, our player base? They're kind of just waiting on us to get the green light to be able to uh, mm -hmm. integrate in. But uh, probably, uh, you know, if I had to personally project uh, myself, I would say uh, maybe within the next year or so, you can see a huge, huge uh, onboarding mm -hmm. events that uh, you know will be up there with some of the biggest, uh, biggest That's MMOs cool. around. That's cool. Like the uh, MMO landscape evolved since, like so much since, like uh, yeah, the beginning of World of Warcraft. Um, it, it's a fascinating because yeah, like you have more and more choices, and like even the gamers go from one MMO to um, to another. You just don't stay in WoW forever for the last for for the next the next uh, fifteen years because yeah, you have other stuff to do. You're not like Asmon Gold. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just uh, farming. Yeah, farming the same dungeons, and that's the that's the beautiful thing about us being yeah. a digital world, not just an MMO game. Uh, is that there's essentially unlimited number of experiences uh, that are possible, and you know, I don't I don't want to give too much away, but uh, let's just say, uh, you know, I'm not just going to uh, go speak at this global sports business forum, uh, you know, with these major organizations. I'm not just going to uh, uh, you know, to show up, there's uh, there's some things behind the scenes that you know we're looking to work on with them and integrate with them. Yeah. Um, question from Carlos: Like, do you have your monthly growth uh, MIU uh, number? Do you know it? 
So um, oh off the top, I, I would have to check uh, our statistics. Off the top, no, I do not know it. But like okay. I said, right now, we're not really in the active yeah. growth stage because right now everything leading up to kind of our, our alpha release has all been uh, really performance op and uh, development. So all this is, it's been kind of, you can think of like, uh, you know, let's say you jump on a uh, Kickstarter campaign for a game, you know, that pre-alpha kind of exclusive, uh, exclusive access. That's really what we've been in for this past amount of time. So kind of those metrics don't really so much pertain to us because we're not, uh, you know, we're not in full release, but uh, all those will be pertinent to us once we're released on the Epic Store and we have these mass onboarding events. Right now, we're, we're actually leaning into that kind Kind of exclusive gameplay type of uh type of vibe only for our community members and you know a smaller closed audience uh, it, it, right. this is an exclusive experience you know so it, it, like i said we're kind of the one that been uh bottlenecking our own player base because uh we want to we want to give the first uh kind of global impression be extremely polished and once we have our race mode out so uh with the release of our alpha is when you'll see uh, kind of those metrics be a little more pertinent to us nice that's pretty dope uh okay so uh, we're gonna slowly wrap it up uh, the show because uh, it's already uh three uh, like uh we already been like in uh after the one hour mark and i'm sorry for like the 50 minutes delay that's on me but uh okay so if i want to join like uh the yaku cop like collection event games like where should i start now after two years after being late after two years um, so right now, uh, because we're in pre-alpha, nothing is gated. So Ooh. if you want to just kind of experiment, uh, see how you like the game and join in. On Wednesday, we're having a community event where the Yakushima world will be open. Nice. And uh, there's going to be a pretty fun, engaging event that will be going on Wednesday, September 20th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. It'll be opened up and uh, there'll be a number of things to do there. And then uh, as far as the collection, um, so each... Each kind of piece of the collection has its own, uh, you know, in-game utility. The avatar, obviously, if you want one of our Yaku Corp avatars to represent, once we, uh, once the alpha is up, then that's when the gating is going to come. So if right now you can play as any avatar of any of our of ourselves or any of our partner projects, but once the uh, alpha is released, it'll be gated. Uh, so you'll have to own one of our avatars. The bikes will be uh, gating the racing. And so if you want to engage with that whole racing system and, you know, we have a few things for the DGENs there, like uh, betting on races and, and things like that. So that should be fun tournaments and high stake death matches and things like that. And then our capsules uh, are, like we said, uh, if you want to have a home within this digital world and uh, as we increase um, our buildings and uh, kind of our onboarding that in that sense uh we're looking to probably keep the same number of capsules so they you know uh obviously nfa but uh you know they're gonna be a little bit more limited and uh spread across all the buildings so if you're gonna want to have a capsule whether it's in the monkey dow tower or anything you're gonna have to own one of our capsule collection nice okay like the capsule x and yes this is like the ticket and the floor price is actually 1.6 yes and so yeah. right now uh you know it, it's been kind of the uh you know web3 like you mentioned is, is kind of uh impatience and so yeah. because the world hasn't been opened uh you know people have felt you know downward yeah. selling pressure but once when when our world was uh open before you know there was uh they were yeah. pretty desirable and even now our mansions are sitting at about 20 fp yeah Okay. So oh, uh, yeah, I, I remember, like, I remember the time, like, yeah, it was like 20, 20, 30, 30 so, right? Yep. That's cool. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously NFA, but uh, me personally, if I was, you know, if I was a gamer or consumer, now would be the time where I would, I would want to, you know, mm -hmm. grab my assets. So this is kind of a great place to onboard and on wrap because uh once the game is on epic and then we're launched in alpha you know I, I don't personally foresee that it'll be this uh easily accessible that's dope that's pretty cool uh and yes ramo like yeah we do the stream twice a day now for the next uh this week the next week and then we will have the 24 hour stream on Monday. That's what's going on right now. And yeah, uh, 773 Blaze, thank you so much for participating into this 
uh, marathon streams. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, we love to support. We love the team here. And uh, we'll definitely, uh, when our Kuro merch launches, you'll be one of the first people to get exclusive access to, to some of this merch. I'll be personally right. sending you over some of it. Thank you, bro. I appreciate the gesture. Uh, by the way, now that we have a uh, oh, little stream together, I'm going to add the rules of the Yaku Cup holders, uh, and uh, they will have access to uh, OG and uh, uh, partner, partners' uh, roles that give them access to the Mint. Awesome. <laughs> really appreciate that. And, you know, we'll probably be scooping a few up to throw in the treasury as well. No, no we're talking. Sweep the floor with your infinite amount of money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't worry. And they'll stay locked up. They're not going anywhere. So you might as well, uh, you know, erase those from the supply. They'll, they'll never be, they'll never see the market. That's okay, bro. Like you can, you can farm the royalties. It's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just for support, we always love to support, uh, you know, active builders and we love to support, you know, strong Web3 community members like yourself. You are definitely a staple in the Web3 community. So we appreciate you and we want to, you know, show that appreciation. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, man. And uh, thank you, VP, for the three bucks super sticker. Uh, that's that's that cool. I will uh, send you extra views. Uh, that was this three box. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, okay, so now I think we can slowly wrap it up, I guess, because, yeah, do you have anything to say to our audience that any takeaway that you would like them to know about the project, what's next, or anything that you want uh, the audience to uh, remember? Yeah, definitely. So. Um... Really, when you're, uh, you know, if you're looking for a place that kind of combines, you know, the MMO gameplay, cyberpunk, anime vibes, uh, community, and uh, really all those type of different interactions, and even, you know, some potential uh, business possibilities if you own a business for advertising, storefronts, or, you know, if your DAO wants to have a digital meeting space, the Yaku, it, Yaku Shima world is kind of the only place where all these different integrations are possible in one. So that's kind of our, uh, you know, our unique value prop is that we're the only kind of uh, epicenter and crossroads of all these different verticals and i mean there's a reason why you know they're inviting us to one of the most prestigious sports business uh, events in the entire world because uh, these major web twos also see that uh, you know our unique positioning in this space and uh, well if you want to be a part of uh, you know kind of the future of entertainment gaming uh, retail spaces and digital immersive experiences yakushima is where uh, you know where all these things are possible and our our slogan is build your reality so if you're interested in that, you always have a home at Yaku Corp. Let's go dot WhatsApp. Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm intrigued. Like, I want to see how those apartments are uh, made and like how the whole world interact or how you can interact in the world. Maybe we can even do like a, hmm, can we do a stream inside of Yaku Corp? Yeah, so uh, Wednesday, Wednesday we're gonna have, like I mentioned, the world available and uh, you know offline uh, a little more privately. Uh, so that's our community day on Wednesday. And if you would love okay. to jump in that, we would love to have you, and we would even put your stream as our you know our official sponsored stream of the event. And then uh, I can tell you a little bit more details off stream, but uh, what I can say here uh, for you know a little bit alpha for your audience is that we're gonna have. With the release of our new zone, the Nexus, uh, we're going to have a special event that uh, that's pretty badass. And, uh, you know, let me just say, uh, I'll give a little hint, and I'm sure some people will figure it out. Uh, if you've seen some of the events that Fortnite has thrown, oh, yeah. you can think of something like that. So I don't want to say too much more than that, but uh, you would love to have the decoders in there. And uh, we're kind yeah. of gating it we're kind of gating it uh to exclusive communities so your community is definitely welcome to join and be one of them oh, can, can, can i be a big guy in yaku uh, yaku cop game and then i do a concert and then well, what's up blah 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 hey you're you're uh you're something of a mind reader vince yeah oh, who was the guy oh fuck i forgot the guy in fortnite travis scott 
Yes, that guy. Okay, I, I, can, can I be the Travis Scott of uh, Yaku? Can, can we do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, like I said, I don't want to give away the, the secret surprise, but um, I mean, just if, know that those type of experiences okay. are something that we're heavily looking forward to in the Yaku yeah, world, just... and that's what separates us from just being a game. You know, whether uh -huh. it's concerts, whether it's, uh, you know, exclusive movie premieres, whether it's, uh, you know, sporting events represented in the digital world, simulcast or uh, a number of different things. Those are the possibilities that really highly differentiate us from any MMO, any game, Web 2 or Web 3. Dope. That's dope, man. Uh, okay. Maybe I will take like the last question because then I think you have to go. Um we can uh, i'm having a great time so if uh if you're not in a rush uh, i don't mind staying with your community a bit longer i'm having a great time and uh, okay. but if you have to go we completely understand uh it's it, it's okay i, can, I will uh, sleep later it's fine don't worry about that uh so we can continue okay so can you elaborate what's the epic partnership means exactly. yes so so Epic Games, as you know, is kind of a standard uh, in, in gaming, and they're the creators of Unreal Engine. So we're built in Unreal Engine. So this partnership signals not only a kind of a stamp of approval from Epic Games uh, of the way we've utilized their technology, but also a platform and launch pad. So uh, right now, you currently have to download the game through our, our Amazon uh, S3 launcher. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, people, especially in the Web3 space, are so hesitant for any link, you know, uh, trainers and all those things have kind of uh, traumatized the, the wider community. So with this, it's a trustworthy launchpad that will host uh, and make it easily accessible for us to, you know, update patches and, and all these things and, and give us a huge visibility. So we'll be one of their featured games uh, mm -hmm. and it'll give us a huge visibility into their community, everyone who plays on their launchers cool. and uh that's kind of a, a major propellant that really helps Star Atlas to kind of grow their player base being featured on Epic. And so uh, our integration into there marks kind of a, a stamp of approval from the creators of the engine that we're uh, operating in and a, a new type of uh, increased visibility uh, on Web2. And of course, you know, that, that all that kind of trustworthiness that comes with epic games and their launcher uh, is yeah. another step in assisting us in increasing our other web 2 partnerships so yeah. as you know as they kind of see the more we distinguish ourselves with major partners our uh, trustworthiness and uh, kind of credibility increases and so they're all the more willing to uh, partner with us and make storefronts or uh, whatever That's type cool. of synergies we see okay so but yeah basically it puts you on the map because of like the stamp of like uh, yeah epic games that's cool um, yeah, exactly. Did you mention that Star Atlas is also in the Epic Games launcher? Yes, yes. I, okay, if I'm cool. not mistaken, they are as well. And uh, that's been kind of one of the things that uh, mm -hmm. really helped them. So if you notice, a lot of Star Atlas uh, player base is not really so much in Web3 only. Uh, they have a wider Web2 audience. And it's because of this Epic Games uh, integration mm -hmm. that really allowed them to have that platform. And so uh, that's something we're extremely excited about. And Star Atlas is one of our partner projects. That's and so cool. we're always supporting them as well. And do you see any possibility of interop interoperability between games in Web3, but even also in Web2? Yes, yes. And so okay. uh, if you can think of... Uh... You know, you know how portals has, you know, their different projects, but all integrated within the portals of the world. Yeah, we foresee something like that with uh, Yaku and, and, you know, already as of now, I believe we have 10 to 12 different projects, uh, avatars integrated and some of those are games as well. So we definitely want to go for that interoperability between, uh, you know, where you can seamlessly jump between games and worlds and things like that and that's something we're always open to we're we take the approach of cooperation versus uh you yeah. know competition yeah. because uh we're different products uh, yeah. ourselves and star atlas we're you know we have different icps where we have different aesthetics and so we don't see ourselves really in competition uh and you know we know gamers uh you know you might want to go jump around and play in a spaceship for a bit, but then other times, you know, you might want to go in the anime vibe. And so we don't, we don't really compete with projects. We just focus yeah. on, you know, as many synergies and, and developing internally as we can. 100%. And, uh, okay. So do you envision people will be able to play in Yaku from Xbox, uh, PC and mobile? 
Yes. So in our in our roadmap, uh, so if anyone's in our Discord, in our roadmap, uh, we have the breakdown of kind of the order of steps that will be taken, taking, and in our uh, in our final kind of box there uh, includes console and mobile builds, um, and so that's something that we're. Uh, you know, for for example, uh, sectors like Asia, uh, where they they might not have uh, such a huge player base. That's a uh, you know like heavy PC setups. But what uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's why games like Axie are so popular there because mobile based games are so heavy over there. And so we definitely want to leave no st stone unturned. And so uh, in the future, maybe you'll see uh, you maybe you'll see a race mode mobile. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll see you know this or that having mobile experiences so we're we're definitely open to all of those and we want to make sure that we're servicing as many gamers across as many platforms as we can but of course one step at a time so nice. you know we want to make sure that we have this you know this pce version as optimized as fast and seamless as possible and then we'll be looking to uh kind of kind of uh cultivate those different mm. experiences across those different consoles but yes that is already something that the team has in their crosshairs pretty cool that's dope a lot of yeah we have big uh, we have big aspirations and dreams in the in the yaku team yeah. but uh sometimes we kind of have to bring ourselves back to earth and you know focus on on what's what's on our plate for the the current sprints that's how yeah. we break things down so a mm -hmm. current week to two week sprint and mm -hmm. uh that's where we keep our sights set and you know the, what i always say is you know long journeys yeah. start with uh just putting one foot in front of the other and as long as you're diligent in doing that you'll eventually uh, reach where you want to reach exactly yeah like uh what, what like every walk starts with the first step or something like that <laughs> exactly yeah and, and so when uh you know if you get a little too out of scope then you know you yeah. run the risk of becoming disorganized and not delivering uh you know you make all these amazing promises that you you might really intend to do but uh you know there's only so much time in a day and there's only so many verticals we can focus on at once so uh our goal is always you know uh, the highest possible execution on the most priority tasks and once we complete that then we you know kind of move from there yeah oh 100 yeah like yeah it's easier to execute something when it's cut in 1000 pieces than just start with one big giant stuff to do yeah exactly then you yeah. chew off more than you can handle and uh, exactly. you know the team suffers from fatigue and uh, feeling discouraged and versus when you build and, and really focus on stacking one block on top of the other you have that uh satisfaction of actually completing things and moving exactly. forward in your roadmap exactly and that's why i push my uh what to earn players with uh one views and then discord and then uh merging all of the wallets to avoid multi-watching and one step at a time. We started from a hairdrop and now we have like a Discord connection. <laughs> yeah, a huge cool. system yeah. set up, exactly. And that and that all starts from that initial yeah. seed and watering exactly. on that one seed. And then it kind of, you know, spreads its branches. Yes, exactly. Let, let's do gardening now. <laughs> <laughs> And Mr. Pigbrain, I see your I see your question there. Yes. Uh, once we have Epic Games, which is, we're like I said, we're already signed, and and right now the only thing we're waiting on is them to complete our code auditing, and then you'll be able to you'll all be able to play together. And even within uh within our release of the Nexus, which is fairly soon, you'll all be able to play together. So this is not something that's a year, two years. This is something uh that's very soon. Oh, that very soon. Very right. soon, yeah. I don't. We don't like to uh, ever give exact timelines, just yeah. uh, you know, because especially because we're doing something that hasn't been done before, uh, and even the SDKs that exist mm -hmm. in, in these other MMO games, they're not so comprehensive. They're more kind of read only or, or things like that. So, yeah. what we're doing is completely unique in the gaming sphere and completely you know never done before. So we never want to give timelines, and then you know unforeseen problems occur. But what mm -hmm. I can say is that very soon. I've I've personally played the different game modes, so that'll let you know, uh, kind of their uh, the it's step they're in in development. It's ready. And Ramo, when the Colors Browser extension to replace the player, uh, it, the the browser extension will be called Backpack, and we definitely have to do that because um, right now the traffic is coming from um, 
uh, external uh, origin but the youtube algorithm works better when like you are on youtube so we need to have this extension to go viral on youtube basically so but uh, like right now i'm a bit busy but the backpack xnft decoders app is uh on my uh, development station don't worry about that i don't know if it should be backpack but yes uh, i like backpack i want like very soon like uh, q4 no not q4 q4 will be fixing all of the shit and uh just streaming <laughs> Um, I don't know if it should be backpack, but it's just, I like backpack. I, I, like, I like how money. Um, One thing I can say, uh, is that, you know, we have, uh, we have YouTube embeds available within the Yakuverse world. So who knows, maybe you'll see some decoders, mm -hmm. uh, decoder streams across our Yakuza world. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Send me a screenshot, make a tweet. I will, I will retweet that. <laughs> bro, bro, Definitely. I I, I want the Yaku orders on the on the Discord. Like, yeah, they will need the views, and uh, because I I'm not sure if they're watching um, the the show uh, by themselves, but uh, they, so they will have to buy some views on the um, on the secondary market. But uh, yeah, that's we, we, we're gonna get your orders covered. And uh, thank you, VP, again for your little donation. This us is is this. This all is cute, one hundred percent. I completely agree <laughs> with that message. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, it's cuter. I'm, I'm, I'm cute, cuter than Jazz for sure. So yeah, let's go. That's what's up. <laughs> up, Jazz. I, I, I don't know if you're watching this stream, but uh, yeah. That's but not we're, we're, yeah, there's, there's so much, uh, different synergies and we're, we definitely, uh, you know, want to see how we can integrate views and how okay. we can integrate decoders mm -hmm. into, you know, into our entertainment kind of section within the, the Yakuverse. Oh, bro, if you can give me, uh, uh, views utilities in Yaku, uh, we're going to do some Yaku meetup decoders, all those hot fire. <laughs> Let's do it. Definitely. We're, uh, we're all cool. about that. So, uh, we can, you know, we can talk after the stream and, uh, in okay. the DMS about, uh, you know, about all the integrations. Nice. Uh, that, that's dope, bro. I want to stop the stream so we can start this conversation, but <laughs> yeah, cool. He's done with the decoders. Damn. Yeah. That's what that's, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. I think I need to sweep the floor. I didn't yeah, definitely. Just... Okay, bye. So uh, no, if there's any just... last questions we can uh, kind of address yeah. before we sign up. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, chat, if you have any question, so you can get more views. Uh, you have 30 seconds until one hour and 10, so you can get one more views. Um, but other than that, yeah, man, like, uh, I think, thank you so much for your time. That was really cool. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Thanks, Vince. Definitely, I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm happy to be on here. And, you know, sometimes I've gotten a few interviews where the, you know, the questions aren't the most, you know, the most well curated or anything. This has been one of my favorite and the most fun that I've had. So uh, I really appreciate it. And, you know, this won't be our last one. You can come back on the channel whenever you want when you have a product uh, announcement of like release or stuff like that. Uh, you can you can come back whenever you want. Definitely, and I, I hope I hope to see you in our Yaku world streaming that. Like I said, we'll push it as our official stream. So I, I hope to see you in nice. the world, uh, checking out the Yaku Shima world, and you know, nice. seeing it for yourself. That we're gonna definitely gonna do that, and there is a chance that you're gonna see me in the uh, Alders chat. Um, awesome. Uh, yeah. Th thank you so much, bro. And uh, yeah, everyone who uh, came on the show on Twitter Space, etc. That, thank you so much for doing that. Tomorrow morning, uh, tomorrow 2 p.m. UTC, uh, UTC, what's my time? Uh, CAT. <laughs> so 12 p.m. Uh, UTC, we have another game um, project. Amy, you know Amy from the uh, from Coffee Break. Uh, she is going to uh, explain to us what she's cooking, but it's a Web3 game too. And the Web3 games are like hype right now. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, that's the next uh, sector yeah. that will blow. It makes sense. It makes sense. So yeah. Any, anyway, thank you so much. Seven seven through place. Uh, oh yeah, uh, I just was 
question. Who's behind the Yaku Corp account? Yes, who's talking from the Yaku account? Me. What? Okay, cool. That's that's marketing officer guy. That's cool. Yeah, so whenever you see anything uh, from the Yaku Corp account, Raijin Labs account, any of those accounts, 99.9% uh, yeah. uh, .9 chance it's me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So yeah, we will see you uh, on your personal account, bro. You need more followers too. Yeah, let me. Let me yeah, I that. know, I know. I, I'm uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I'm not too much uh, for self promotion. I, I really love to push uh, the project, but I'm, I'm gonna start uh, kind of uh, building up my following a bit more on my personal page, and so uh, hopefully some spaces in the future between us and things like that will kind of help. We can definitely do that. And I just dropped your little uh twitter account there is 200 people doing that or almost 300 what the fuck we're, we're winning bro. awesome almost appreciate the show <laughs> so you don't want to do a personal promotion but that will do it for you so thank you yeah. i really i really appreciate it <laughs> and yes you can come to Salana side up 7 uh, a.m east every uh, monday and friday uh that's vp um twitter space Awesome. I'll okay, I'll be there. You'll see That's me. Cool. You'll see me jumping in, even if it's not to speak, just to support. That what's up, bro. And see, you're already at 93 followers now. You were at 79 before. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> Let's go. Decoders community. Go ahead, keep it up. <laughs> maybe I'll so do a much. raffle on there. If we get some uh, <laughs> you know, some good traction, maybe we'll do some Yaku NFT raffles on there. Let's do that. Thank you so much, man, and everyone in the audience. That was a great stream, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Take it easy, Vince. Have a good night. Cheers, man.